A big part of gymnastics is pushing through that pain, pushing through that injury. I just really realized, you know, I'm not going to get anywhere in life if I just rely on someone else to push me. So I really pushed myself and I hated failure. I hated making a mistake on the carpet. I was harder on myself than anyone else. Mary Sanders was four when her dad started her in gymnastics. A former U.S. gymnast himself, he trained her with one goal in mind, Olympic gold. I wanted to be like him and I wanted to make him proud. He always used to call me his little Olympian. Then when Mary was eight, her father died from an aggressive bone cancer. Two years earlier, Mary gladly asked Jesus into her heart. Now, she was angry. I definitely felt angry towards God when my father passed. I mean, what eight-year-old thinks that's fair, right? And not just losing a father, losing your coach, losing your idol, like everything in that moment just taken away. And how is that God's plan? Mary and her two brothers looked to their mother, Jackie, and their aunt, Corinne, for reassurance and to hold the family together. While they encouraged Mary to continue pursuing her Olympic dreams, both women stress the importance of putting God first. God is the one we're really trying to please, right? The res results of judges isn't really the main focus. As a child of God, you you know, that's where your worth comes. I talked to her about uh, the Lord's plan and keep your eyes on Jesus. However, Mary's focus was still on achieving Olympic success. I always felt if I didn't make it to the Olympics, I would be disappointing my father. Then when he passed, there was a new sense of pressure in that my mom's sacrificing everything for her kids. I cannot fail at this, because what's it all for? So I'm sure gymnastics did become my God, for sure. I became obsessed with it. So Mary pushed herself harder. She also switched from artistic to rhythmic gymnastics, which improved her national ranking. By the time she was 11, Mary was training and competing internationally. The training and travel was intense, expensive, and stressful on everyone. Her mom knew she needed more than just financial support. And I'd be very lonely, and sometimes it, it just felt like it would never end. But my mom always would pack Bible verses in my suitcases. Uh, be bold, be strong, for God is with you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It, I always had constant reminders of God in my life, and that was because of my mom. I wanted her to know that, you know, God loved her and he was going to be there for her and whatever she was doing. Finally, on her 19th birthday, Mary's and her father's dream came true as she represented the U.S. at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. Even though she didn't medal, it was a proud, bittersweet moment for Mary. I performed four four routines and didn't make any mistakes. And I remember my last routine was a club routine and I just did this big fist pump at the end because and I, I just pointed up and I was just like, thank you, because I knew it was my dad and God watching down on me. After the Olympics, Mary retired from gymnastics and got a job as an acrobat with Cirque du Soleil. While she enjoyed performing, the constant travel brought back the feelings of isolation and emptiness she had as a young gymnast. For the next 10 years, Mary struggled to find her purpose. I would find myself just staying in my room, just trying to recover physically and, and I was just mentally, emotionally exhausted. And I found it difficult to really put God first in my life during that time. Meanwhile, her mother and her aunt continually prayed for Mary's safety and direction. I was really praying a lot for her on that tour. And even when you can't see it or you don't know, he, he's there, he has a plan. In 2009, Mary finished her Cirque du Soleil tour and freelanced with them for the next few years. As she tried to figure out what to do next, Mary slipped into a depression. I didn't have that next purpose that I knew that would bring me, like, happiness. I felt like such a failure because I, I couldn't get a job and I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do next. Unable to find work and tired of struggling to make her own way, Mary turned back to God. As she spent time in her Bible and got plugged into a church, she began to realize that her worth didn't come from her achievements, but through her identity in Christ. Finding my faith again and, and finding that happiness in my family and that centeredness really helped me get to the next day and, and understand, you know, God is full of blessings and plans for us. So I think 
if we acknowledge that, then the sky's the limit. She married David in 2018, and the couple have two kids together. Mary has since written her memoir, Nine Lives by 35. In writing my book, I've had to peel back the layers, peel back a lot of the hurt and deal with those, pray with, for that healing and, and move forward. And I think that's been very therapeutic for me. I think I absolutely still have goals, definitely. I just don't think I measure myself or my happiness on those goals. Mary has had a number of careers in her short life, yet she's quick to point out it was only through Christ she found her worth, purpose, and fulfillment. And I was at my most lost periods, but I wasn't praying, I wasn't, you know, giving it to God. Whenever you're in transition in life, it's even more important to lean in and pray.